I'm so glad to see so many of you here today. Um, um, it's, it's exciting for me to be here as well. And I know that many of you, even if um, you know, you're know you not into boxing, you probably heard about something yesterday that there was a, a fight with Manny Pacquiao and Floyd Mayweather. So I don't know too much about boxing, but apparently it was uh, um, supposed to be the, a, a fight of the century. So there was a lot of talk around it last uh, night and even today. And so, um, and Manny Pacquiao, not only is he a Filipino, but he's also a Christian, a believer, and a man of God. And so it's, it's, it's such a great thing that what, what I witnessed is that this man was, you know, using his platform not only just to fight, but to really glorify God genuinely. And you can see he won the hearts of people because of who he was. It wasn't even about, you know, many of you, even if he didn't win, Many of you believe, and all of us believe that he's still a champion because he knows the real meaning of what it is to be a champion. He knows Jesus. And, and whether he wins or whether he loses, he knows who he is and who he's going to praise God. So it was even awesome because you would see that I was watching it and you could see that some of the people were even starting to say, God bless you, because he honored God so much that the atmosphere, you know, people wanted to honor God too. And so it was amazing to see, wow, this man, you know, when every eye was turning to him, he would still glorify God. And so we need to be like that too. It's such a great encouragement, whether you like boxing or not, you know, um, to see that in, in the public sphere with all these eyes watching for a man of God to stand and to glorify God is an awesome thing. All right, well, anyways, I'm not here to preach on Manny Pacquiao today. <laughs> Unfortunately, as, oh, as relevant as it might have been, of course, I believe that God is really doing such a great work in our church today, in CLC, in CLC Scarborough. And there's so many things that are going on that God is doing, and it's so exciting to be a part of the family of God. Amen. We've been learning so many things about, you know, messages we've been hearing about growing up, you know, maturing, build, last time I spoke here about uh, building foundations, and my brother talked about, you know, being a son and being sown into the community, being sown as a son into the world, and our heart is to reflect and represent God and represent the Father in everything that we do, all right? And, and um, and also we've been learning about being part of the family of God, amen? We learned that, so far we've been learning about those four functions that the church is, that we are a hospital where people can come and be restored, be, uh, 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 be set free, be healed, right? And also we've learned that we are an equipping center. We, we come and there's preaching and teaching and, and God equips us with his word, and we're also an army that we're, we're advancing the kingdom of God. You know, that we're coming into um, uh, being his army. That we're fighting the good fight of faith. Amen. But the one thing that we also are is a family. Is a family. We've been learning about that. We're learning how we are a family. The church is a family. Um, the New Testament picture of the church is family. If you even look in Ephesians 3, 14 to 15, we're not going to go there. Um, the New Testament church, the picture of the church was a family. God's design is that he, there was a household of God, that we are the household of God. And we're not just a preaching or teaching center. So, you know, maybe you come and you, you think this is, that's all it is, where somebody will come and preach to you and teach you and that's it. No, we're also a family of God. And so for us to be a family, we need to create an environment of family. We need to enjoy family. We need to be a family. We need to learn how to love and laugh and have time together and walk together in each other's lives. And you know what? Um, this is God's picture. This is God's design. He was the one who called himself our father. And the enemy, the enemy's goal is for us to, uh, to his goal is to destroy family. You know, he doesn't want us to be the family of God. He doesn't want us to, to be the, uh, uh, in, in relationship with one another. He, he wants to break down family. And 
Because he wants to break down family, it's really he wants to break down our relationships with one another. That's the enemy's plan. That's the enemy's goal is that we would not be the family of God because God's design is that even our, he calls himself our heavenly father and we are his children. The Bible says that our spirit, when we become children of God, our spirit bears witness and we cry out, Abba, Father. Because we could become children, he's our father. So you can see that God revealed himself as a father, right? Even Jesus was revealed as a son because God wanted to show that he was a father. And so a lot of times we miss it because we think that church is just this preaching and teaching center. But that's part of it. That's part of it. We need to preach. We need to bring the gospel. The Bible says that blessed are the feet, beautiful are the feet who bring the gospel. And so that's part of it, but we are also a family of God. And for us to be a family, we need to understand that to grow as a family, that there's importance, there's an importance on our relationships with one another. Amen? There's an importance of our community, the community that God has placed us into community with one another because he wants us to cultivate family. Friends, you know, just to remind you is, is, is that a lot of times we can miss what God is doing in our lives simply because we might not know the importance of it. So we might miss out being family with one another because we never knew it was important. Maybe we, we, we have come into even an area of bondage because we just didn't know the truth and the word of God. And so this, this afternoon, I want to just... Um, I believe that God is, is equipping us. God is calling us to understand his picture of family. He's bringing us into closer into his, his truth. You know, that's what the Holy Spirit does. Is he uh, keeps aligning his church so that it would look like what he looks like. That his bride would look like what he designed it to be. Because a lot of times throughout culture, we begin to adopt things that are not from the Bible. We start to be ignorant of what the Word of God says, and we just simply do things by default because that's all we've known. And so today, we're, we want to align ourselves. We want to look at the Word of God and see how God has designed us to be in relationship with one another. We want to desire to put a priority on family, on relationship, because God himself has a heart for relationship. Amen? So let's look at John 17, 20 to 23 today. Let's open your Bible if you have a Bible app or if you have a physical Bible. Let's all turn there. John 17, 20 to 23. Jesus prays for all, the, all believers. This is Jesus uh, talking and he's saying, my prayer is not for them alone. So before this, he's talking about the disciples. So he's saying, my prayer is not just for disciples. I pray also that those who will believe in me through their message, that all of them may be one. Father, just as you in me and I in you, in you, may they also be in us so that the world may believe that you have sent me. I have given them the glory that you gave me, that they may be one as we are one. I in them and you in me so that they may be brought to complete unity. Then the world will know that you sent me and have loved them even as you have loved me. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for your word of God, the word of God today. I thank you for the truth, God. And so I pray for every heart that we would um, be postured. You'd posture every heart that we would be good ground, good soil to receive the word and instruction from you, God. May it not be the wisdom or the, the uh, uh, things from man, but Lord, Holy Spirit, you do your unique work in each and every one of our hearts. Open up our ears and open up our minds that we would be, um, we would uh, come in humility to receive, Lord, all that you want to, for us to receive today. We, we say that you alone be glorified. You alone be praised in our midst. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. See, friends, when we look at this scripture, we're looking at John 17. Jesus is praying, and you can see God's heart for us to be one. He was, he was talking, and he was saying that they may be one. You know, just in you, you and Jesus was saying, just as you and I are one, Father, I pray that they may be one. I pray that they be one, that, that then the world will know that you have sent me and you have loved them even as you've loved me. Ever since the beginning, God has a desire. You can see him. He, he, he speaks of relationships.
relationship with one another. He speaks of it, he talks of it, and, and his desire is for us to be one, to live in community with one another. Ever since the beginning, family, and not only family, but relationship was God's idea. When he created men, even in the beginning in the garden, he already said that it's not good for men to be alone. And so he created Eve, remember? He started the very first family. And you can see throughout scripture that God used people in each other's lives so that people, that God would reveal himself through people, even through the relationships. You know, like Moses needed Aaron and her, Moses with Joshua, all these people, Joseph, his brothers, you know, learning forgiveness, Ruth, Naomi, all throughout David, Saul, Samuel, there's so many people. God used people to reveal himself. And we need to understand that if God's heart is for us to be one, if he has, if he places an importance on, importance on relationship, then we too have to understand the importance of the relationships in our lives. We have to understand there are the importance of the relationships with each other. And we have to understand how we can cultivate family in our lives, how we can cultivate a sense of community that we would be one. Amen? Because that's what God's word said, that we would be one. And, and this, this afternoon, don't you, don't you want to obey the word of the Lord that we would be one? It's his heart that we would be one. So there's an importance on relationship. They are a big deal to God. Even you can see that Jesus that was sent, God sent Jesus because of what? Relationship. Because he wanted relationship with you and I. He wanted to restore that relationship with you and I. So he, 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 he loves relationship. He wants relationship. The, you can even see the, the, the commandments that the greatest commandment is love the Lord your God to our relationship with God. But also the next, if most, the greatest commandment, the next one was love one another. Right? Love your neighbor as yourself. And you can look at John 13 verse 35. The Bible says, by this all people will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. You see, friends, the Bible says that people will know us by our relationships with one another, how we love one another. Maybe not just how many scriptures we can quote, or if we're the best worker, or if we're the best this, if we, you know, we sing here, or we play in the band, or, you know, maybe we serve at the back, or if we're the best, re uh, the best something, you know, by our giftings, not just by our giftings or the best things that we can do. Yes, God will use that to, to exemplify his glory and his splendor in our lives, but the Bible says that the people will know that we are his disciples because of how we love one another. How we have a relationship with one another. I remember my brother talked and he, he said, you know, sometimes your, your coworkers or your workmates will never see you in your gifting. They might not see you lead praise and worship or they might not see you in, in your care group. That's the prayer that they would come one day, but maybe they might not see you and how they see you is how you relate to each other. Maybe they see you, how, how you talk about even your, your, your family, how you speak of your relationships with one another. The Bible says they will know us by our love for one another. They will know that he's our, we are his, uh, his disciples if we love one another, if we are completely united. And so, you know, for us to be, help us to be the family of God, for us to cultivate relationships in our lives, there are some keys that we can look to in the word of God today that can help us. Amen. Help us. If, if God is saying this is a priority, this is who I called the church to be, this is a function that we are called to be a function, how can we do it? And we're going to look at the word of God to, today to see how can we cultivate, how can we be in relationship with one another that we would be one so that we can demonstrate to the world who Jesus is. Amen. So number one, one of the keys that we can we can learn for or we can um, understand or, or understand more is that relationships, it takes being apart. To cultivate family or relationships, it takes being apart. Let's look at Romans 12, 4 to 5. 
For just as each of us has one body with many members, and these members do not all have the same function, so in Christ we, though many, form one body, and each member belongs to all the others. Friends, we're all part of a family. Each of the members belongs to one another. If you remember even in 1 Corinthians 12, you can take it down in your notes, we're not going to go there, but it talks about it more, that we are all part of one body, and although we have different, um, although we are very different from each other, just like an eye is different from a hand, because Christ is our head, we are all part of the same body, we are all part of this family, we're all members of this family God, we're part of this body, and we cannot say that we don't need each other. We need to be part of the family. It takes being a part of the family, a part of the body, and we need to function as part of it. In a practical sense, in, even in the family of God, in our church setting here, and even in CLC, we need to belong and to be part. Even in our care groups or our relationships, you know, if we go out, you know, some of your care groups might go out and you might say, why are we doing this? Or we go on church camp or picnic. It takes being a part of those things to build relationship. Yeah. We gotta be part. Let's continue to look at Ephesians 4, 15 to 16. Instead, speaking the truth in love, we will grow to become in every aspect the mature body of who, him who is the head, that is Christ. From him, the whole body joined and held together by every supporting ligament grows and builds itself up in love as each part does its work. Friends, the Bible says that we grow and build ourselves up in love. And it, as we do work, as we, we are a part of the body, you know, uh, recap that each person is a function and is a, has a part. Even in this context, it's talking about how we work together, how we're different from each other and how there's different giftings even in the body of Christ. But we build it, we build ourselves up and as we do our work, as we function together. And that's why it's a testimony that there's a work involved in building our relationships with one another and building ourselves in love. And you know, friends, it doesn't just happen. Relationships don't just happen. For example, you know, this might be a familiar scenario to all of you. If you come and you go to lunch every single day and sit, you know, in some sort of place, or maybe you go to this one coffee shop or another, and every day you go there, maybe the same people go there. Or even a bus, you know, bus stop. Maybe, maybe the same people go there, you go to your bus stop every single day, but just because you guys go to the same place, it doesn't mean that you have a relationship with one another. Is that right? In our church setting here today, just because we all attend in the same building, or maybe even attend in the same care group, we go in there and go out, it doesn't mean that we have a relationship with one another. It doesn't mean that we know each other, we have a relationship with each other. We have to do, there, there's, a, there's a work that in, is involved in being part of the family and to cultivate our relationship, and that's how we cultivate our relationships with one another. It takes a working relationship. It's no use if one person is just a good family member. It takes all of us. Yeah. You know, and that's why there's sometimes a breakdown in, in family. Because just because we sleep in the same house and go, you know, live under the same roof, it doesn't mean we have good relationships with one another. And that's what's happened in our society today. That's why there's been a breakdown in family relationships, families, because they don't have relationship with one another. Because just because they sleep in the same house and, and maybe go in and out, you know, they don't know each other. There's, there's no relationship. And it is, that's the same thing in our house. In our family, do we have relationship with one another? It takes an effort to be a part. You know, even if you were to do everything in your house, if one person is, is a good family member, it takes everyone to be in the relationship with one another. For example, some of your, you parents, you might bring your kids to, you know, do all these things and go on vacation. And if, if your, your kid just says, I don't want to talk to anybody, I don't want to do anything, 
It doesn't help the relationship. It doesn't help. And so we can even, one person in our family can be a really good family member, maybe your leader, your coach, your, your, your uh, care group leader can be extending all the love already and saying, oh, you know, I want to pour this out to you, inviting you all the time. But if you're not part of the family, then it, you're not growing in relationship with one another. It takes more than just one person. All of us, the body, it's just like the body. You know, we can't say to our hand that we don't need it. You know, the eye cannot say, I don't need you, hand. We're part of the body. Just because we're different doesn't mean we don't need each other. And that's the picture that the Bible gives us. So often we try to live our lives very independently. If you realize in our culture today, it celebrates independence. You know, that if we can do something on our own, we live in a do-it-yourself culture nowadays. You know, I can DIY. I can just do it myself. And it's celebrating. You know, if someone is a self-made millionaire, they celebrate that. Oh, wow, you didn't even have to do it with anybody. And that's the culture that we bring in in our mindset sometimes. I don't want to do things on my own, on my own. And we sometimes take that into the church. That we just want to do things on our own. That I can be this holier than thou person and not be involved or have relationship with anybody else and just come here and then I read my Bible and you know I, I, I pray and you know that those are all good things but you're missing some of the stuff the Bible says about being in relationship with one another you know it, it's, it's more than just going in and coming out and just having that independent spirit that I don't want to be involved in any of that stuff it takes all of us to be part of the family of God. The Bible says even in Psalm 68 that he is a father to the fatherless. Some of you know this. He is a defender to the defenseless. And he places the lonely in, the fam in a family. You know, there are no loners in the kingdom of God. All of us are part, our members are, are part of the family of God. And we sometimes isolate ourselves because we feel that if we need other people, that it's it's bad. Yeah. That we're worse off for some for some reason. Because in our culture, it feels like if we're doing it on our own, that we're the best. And if we need help or we need people in our lives, that we're not the best. But the Bible says opposite. The Bible says that we need to work together. The Bible says we need relationship with one another. The reality is that, you know, I was talking earlier about, you know, you want to be sometimes this, uh, you, you sometimes might have this mentality that you go in, you come out, you just do your own thing. And, um, but the wake up, the reality is that Jesus puts people in our lives. And when we look at John 17, he's saying that you would be one. His heart is that we would be in community with one another, that we would have one heart, that nobody would be left on the side doing their own thing. Imagine if you were just to cut off your hand and just leave it over there, and you're just, you know, doing your own thing. The, the rest of the body is going somewhere, and you're just over there. No, we're all part. Amen? <laughs> We are, we are to love one another. Even the Bible says that, that we are to love one another. Let's look at actually 1 Corinthians 12, 25 to 26. So that there should be no division in the body, but that its parts should have equal concern for each other. If one part suffers, every part suffers with it. If one part is honored, every part rejoices with it. You know, this is the heart. You can see that God wants us to be part of it. When we're in relationship with one another, if one suffers, we suffer. Because we're one. If one rejoices, we rejoice. Because we're one. It's not one, you know, one person is rejoicing and, and the, it's just like your body. If, if, you're, if you're sick, it's like your whole body is sick. It's not your hand is just sick. Your whole body is sick. 
Same thing with that. It's, it's, if, if our whole, if we, if one part of our body suffers, we suffer. If one part rejoices, if it's in hell, we all rejoice because we're one. You know, the reality is that must, mo much of our, our, our shaping and our testing and even encouragement or insight and understanding comes through people. You see, God can, God, yes, he calls you to himself. He can speak to you in, your, in, in the quietness of your heart and encourage you in your spirit when you're talking to him, when you're reading his word, when you're worshiping, when you're communing with the Holy Spirit. And, but a big way that he also uses is by people, that he speaks is through people in our lives. He uses people in our lives to sharpen us, to edify us, to encourage us, to correct us, to bring discipline in our lives. You can even see it in 1 Thessalonians 5, 11 to 15. We won't go there. But if you're taking notes, you can write that. Just... It just talks about how we are to encourage one another and build each other up. You know, the Bible even says that we are um, as iron sharpens iron, so one man or person sharpens another. And that we even also carry each other's burdens. See, friends, God uses people in our lives. He has a heart that we, we have to be part. He uses people and he wants us to be one. But we're part, we're part. And we gotta be part, we gotta take the effort to be part of the family. That we're not trying to be a hand cut off. You know, it's, it's a hard thing because a lot of us want to be independent. But God's calling us, he says the truth of the word of God says that I want you to be one. I want you to be in a relationship with one another because that is what's gonna glorify me. That, when people see that we are one, even though we're different, they see Christ as the head. That's what John 17 says, is that they can see, that's, that's when they would see the Father through us, is when we are one. So the first thing is that, of course, it takes our effort, it takes being a part, that's a key to cultivate our relationships, is that we start to be a part. We, we start to understand that we belong, that we're members of the family, that we don't just do our own thing, but we want to be a part, that we need each other in our lives. And number two is that it takes maturity to cultivate our relationships with one another and not only just allow people in, and, and but another key is being able to be one with others or, or to cultivate good relationships is that we need to be mature. We, it takes maturity. Unity takes maturity. Let's look at Ephesians 4, 11 to 16. So that the body of Christ may be built up until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature, attaining the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. To cultivate good relationships, there's a lot of things that we need to, you know, we need to do is we need to be able to look beyond the fence and forgive one another. We need to be, the Bible saying that we need to be at peace with one another and to genuinely love each other. But friends, it takes maturity to do these things. Because relationships are sometimes messy. People are sometimes, because we're imperfect, people sometimes offend us. Sometimes we get hurt. But it takes maturity to understand that because God says that we need to be one, I need to be mature enough to understand that I can't afford to be offended. I can't afford to have bitterness in my towards my brother and sister. I can't afford to have, you know, um, uh, unforgiveness in my heart towards them. Because we need to be one. Friends, think about it. How can we... How can we be, you know, how can we be one with someone who we're offended against, we have offense against? How can we be one with them? It's just the reality. And many of us, you know, I, I've been in church a long time. And it might not seem like a long time, but ever since I was young, I grew up in the church. So that's tw like about 20 something years already. And I've seen a lot of things, and I've seen, you know, some people get offended so easily. It's like you're tiptoeing in the church. Everybody's offended. And God is saying, but be more, rise up, and, and, and it takes maturity. Be more mature. 
be rise up and be more mature because you need to be one. You know, that's a testimony of some of the young people that I'm, I'm really working with in, in, in Brampton. That I can see that even though they're young, they're maturing. Because even if I would correct them or tell them something, it doesn't matter what tone I say it in. You know, some of us, if, even if it's the wrong tone or if it's the wrong, you know, environment. Oh, you didn't treat me first and bring me to dinner and then you didn't give, you didn't pay for the dinner and then you're going to tell me, you know, this. <laughs> you, you, you know, that, that's a, we're, we're offended because people don't do that. But that just shows our immaturity. You know, I have experienced that they're rising up in their maturity because they desire relationships so much that they say, you know what, I need you to correct me. And they would look beyond the way I say it, the how I say it, of course we need to be, you know, we need to speak the truth in love, so we have responsibility to put balance to that. We have to, we have to speak the truth in love, we have to watch how we say things, but we can't be offended at every single thing. Because God's calling us that we need to have good relationships with one another. We as family need to have good relationships with one another. That we would not be carry offense for so long. People don't see Jesus like that. And that's what the Bible is saying. That when they are one, they can see me. When they are one. It's a testimony that the Father is in me and the Father is in them. And it takes maturity to forgive. To look beyond all these circumstances that are so hard for us to get over. It takes maturity. But we need to see that God's heart for us is to be in relationship with one another. Is for us to, to, you know, to desire that much relationship that I can't afford to be, you know, offended with you. We, we have short accounts with one another. Where, yeah, you might get hurt because we're different. I talk differently. Maybe you're more, you know, maybe you talk really nice and, and more lovingly. Just the nature of you. And sometimes other people just talk very blunt and very straight. But because we're different, and then sometimes because we're not the same, we get offended and we get hurt. Friends, we have to know we're different. We have to be mature. We have to grow in our maturity to see God wants us to be in relationship with one another. He wants us to be one. So no matter how it comes, you know, we can be easy to forgive. We can release forgiveness. We can not be offended. We can start, oh, I need this in my life. I need, thank you for who you are in my life. It's a hard thing. I know I'm talking and I'm speaking really harsh right now because it's a hard thing. But it's, it's what will glorify the Father. Imagine when they see the church and you can see that they just love one another so much. The problem is a lot of people come in and they just see we're fighting with each other. Why would they want to do that? They don't, you don't see, the, that's not demonstrating the Father. He's about love. He's about forgiveness. And so that's why he's saying, forgive that I'll, as your Heavenly Father forgave you. And so we're just going to look into Scripture. There's a, a lot of verses that you can find on, on things like this, on, on being in a relationship with one another. But we're going to just go through a quick bunch of Scriptures. I'm going to read them really quickly. Just for you to get a picture that it's not just me saying all this stuff. It's the Bible. It's the truth of the Word of God that God's heart is for us to be united. God's heart is for us to be live at peace and harmony with one another, to love each other, to forgive one another so that we can be one. Let's look at 1 Corinthians 1 verse 10. The Bible says, I appeal to you, brothers, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you agree that there be no divisions among you, but that you be united in the same mind and the same judgment. Romans 12, 16, live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Never be wise in your own sight. Colossians 3, 13, bear with each other and forgive whatever grievances you may have against one another. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. Matthew 18, 21 to 22. 
Then Peter came to Jesus and asked, Lord, how many times shall I forgive my brother when he sins against me? Up to seven times, he, Jesus answered, I tell you, not seven times, but 77 times. Colossians 3, 14. And above all, put on, above all these, put on love, which binds together everything, which binds to everything together in perfect harmony. 1 John 4, 12. No one has ever seen God. If we love one another, God, God uh, abides in us, and his, per, his love is perfected in, in us. You see, friends, there's many other scriptural examples of how we, God's heart is to be, for us to live at peace with one another. For us to be one, to be in relationship, to forgive. Amen? I know many of you have heard a lot of things. But the thing is, we didn't realize sometimes how important our relationships are. Yes. That people will either see the Father or not see the Father just because maybe, you know, maybe that might be a hindrance for them to see God is because of we're fighting each other or we're holding bitterness against each other. And it takes us to be mature, to stop now, you know, thinking about all the ways that we can be offended. And to start thinking of all the ways that we can forgive. And think all the ways that we can win our brothers. That we can win our sisters. That we can love them. That we can, you know, be one with them. Like God wants to advance his kingdom. But we, we have to be one in heart and mind. Yes, my brother. Yes, my sister. When, you, when you, so you're going through something, I'm, it's like I'm going through something. When you're rejoicing, I'm rejoicing. That we would be one, amen? It takes maturity. But also, the third key that we can think to help us um, in, in our relationships with one another, to cultivate family, is of course that it takes humility. So it takes us to be apart, not to be alone, and to just be isolated or independent. It takes us, uh, takes maturity for us to, to want to win our brothers and our sisters, for us to look beyond the fence, to forgive, to be quick to forgive. And lastly, it takes humility. Let's look at Philippians 2, 1 to 8. Therefore, if you have any encouragement from being united with Christ, if any comfort from his love, if any common sharing in the spirit, if any tenderness and compassion, then make my joy complete by being like-minded, having the same love, being one in spirit of one mind, doing no do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourself, not looking to your own interests, but each of you to the interests of, other, of the others. In your relationships with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus, who being in, in very nature of God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on, on a cross. Friends, you see what Jesus' example was. He valued relationship with us so much that he was so humble that he didn't say, I'm God. He was so humble that he considered us. And he was humble enough to go to the cross because, he, because of us. Because of his relationship with us. It takes humility. And the Bible says that he was humble. He didn't say that, oh, I, I'm this, and why do I have to go for my brother and my sisters? Why do I have to go for your children? He was humble even to death on the cross. It was his humility that he didn't say, I was this. And in the same way in our, in our lives, you know, sometimes we have the pride of life. We have the pride that, you know, I'm this and they're that. Why do I have to be the one to forgive? Or why do I have to be the one to do this? Why, why am I the one, you know, always me? You know, I, I'm this, I'm already doing so much stuff. I'm already, you know, even this and that and that. 
And the Bible says it was, we need to be humble for our relationships. If we want to win, if we want to be one, it doesn't matter. Even Jesus went to the cross and he was humble. He didn't say, I'm this. In the same way, we need to humble ourselves and say, you know what, for my brother and my sister, for our relationship, that people would see the Father in, in us. It doesn't matter about what I did or, or, you know, who I am. If I have the best gifting, you know, if I have the best talent and I'm better at them than this, in this, or I'm, I'm better than them at that, we need to consider others' interests over our own firm relationships, to cultivate the relationships, to be a family. We need to consider others. We need to consider others. We need to consider our brothers and sisters. We need to consider our family. That it, whatever they're going through, we need to consider it. That we, it's not just our own thing, our, our selfish ambition. That's what the Bible says, not just our, our sample, our, our, our selfish ambition or vain conceit. But we need to not look just at our own interests, but to cultivate our relationships with one another. To, to, that they would be strong, we need to be humble. We need to be humble. You know, this is just an interesting thing. You, you see, in, in we, I, I showed you the verse earlier in Matthew 18, 21 to 22. Remember, Peter came to Jesus and was asking, Lord, how many times shall I forgive my brother? And he's saying, he basically said a lot. You know the reality of that is? How come it's a lot? Because these are the people that you're in relationship with. You constantly have to forgive the people that are in your life, that you're in relationship with. Because you know, sometimes we might have the pride and say, I forgave them one time, and then they did it again. But if we consider their interests, we say, God, I want us to be one. It's not about me and what, you know, because I'm right this time, and I've been right maybe 3, 70, 70 times. But the people in relationship with, we have to keep extending forgiveness. And we, have to, we can't afford to be offended. We can't afford to be isolated. We can't afford to just keep doing our own thing. We can't afford not to be part. We need to start to remember that God's heart for us is that we would be one. You know the people sitting next to you the people in your care groups, the people in your families. God desires that you would be one. Imagine, it's a very, you know, it, it might sound like a very simple thing. Oh, we gotta be one. But if you think you're gonna be one with someone, that you would have the same heart, the same mind. You gotta know a lot about that person. You gotta be in relationship. So it takes being a part, and for us to continue that, it takes us to have maturity that we don't stop going into relationship just because we got offended. And just because, you know, they did something or said something in a way that we didn't want them to do it. And lastly, that we have to continue to be humble in our lives, that we need these people in our lives, that God desires through us People would know who Jesus is because of our relationships by our love for one another. By our love for one another. It's amazing. And so you can see there's such a priority on our relationships. There's such a priority for us to reflect God. You know, we've been talking about this over and over again. We've been talking about maturing. We've been talking about growing, you know, being a son, representing, reflecting. And God is taking us back and saying, how about our relationships with one another, with our families, with our coworkers, you know, but mostly, especially in the family of God. Because we're all part, if Christ is our head, we need each other. Just because my eye is different from my hand doesn't mean that I don't need them. You know, we will do things differently. And so it takes maturity that we're part. I need that part. They might see things differently because my hand can't see. Right? My eye can see. <laughs> my hand can't see. And so our, 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 our brothers and sisters might see things differently or do things differently 
But we gotta recognize God has actually orchestrated all of this. He has made us different that we can celebrate one another and say we need each other. Amen? Are you challenged today? I want to challenge you and encourage you because it's even our prayer in our heart that we begin to reflect the Father. That when people come in here, they would see that we love each other so much. Because that's a family. You might see different pictures of what family looks like today. But this is what the Bible says. That we are to love one another. Amen? And by this, they will know that we are God's disciples. By our love for another, we, that we would be one and it would glorify, they would see the Father in us. It would glorify Him. Amen? So I want to challenge you, encourage you, that as you continue to grow, as you continue to grow in this process, as even as a church, especially as a church family, you know, talk to each other, spend time, be a part of the things, your care group leaders, your activities that you're doing with your coaches, if they're going on a picnic, go on the picnic with them. If, you know, they're doing this, go. Be a part. And stop being offended. <laughs> and let's be humble. Amen? Very simple, but it really is a challenge to us because because of our heart to reflect the Lord. Amen? Amen? Amen. Let's call up the worship team today. We're just going to pray. Father God, we thank you for, Lord, to the truth of your word. We thank you that it is your heart to reveal yourself and for you to use us, God. So we pray right now for each and every heart and mind here today, God, that you, uh, we thank you that you put the lonely in, in a family. And today, God, we want to be your family. We want to develop relationships with one another. We want to have good relationships that people would see and know you by the way we love one another. And so, God, give us the courage. Give us the boldness. Give us the humility. Give us the maturity to continue to walk in your ways. And not just what the world says, but, Lord, in, in the truth of your word. Show us. Reveal to us. God, we thank you that we can love. We're empowered to love only because you first loved us. So, God, we invite you in, in this place and in our hearts, even in this moment, that you would begin to change us, that you would begin to soften our hearts. Let your word, let the word of God continue to speak in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And so we're going to call you uh, as the worship team just sings. You know, we're going to invite you all to stand. You can stand and, and we're just going to sing. And if, if you know, um, we've been talking about this, about family and, and, and our relationships. And if you've ever felt that you've had to do it alone before, or you've ever felt, you felt that, you know, you, you haven't been in the best relationships and, and your heart now is that, God, allow me to begin to, to have the, 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 the importance of relationship. Allow me to cultivate my, the relationships in my life. If that's you, I want to invite you to the front and our, um, our leaders are here to come and pray with you. And also, if you have any other prayer requests, just let them know what your requests are. We're going to pray with you. We're going to stand with you because we're family. We're here to build each other up. We're here to stand with you. We're here to encourage you. This is why we're here because we're called as a family to stand with you. To pray with you. When you're in something, we're with you. And so if that's you today, if you even just want prayer on any of the things that even related to this topic or even regarding your own prayer request, just feel free to come as we worship the Lord and sing this song.
There's so many relationships that are so broken in homes, in workplace, even in the house of God. But it takes a decision, one step decision that we need to decide that we will fix this relationship. Maybe it's been a long time, maybe present, maybe you're just trying to, to neglect it and hopefully it will be fixed. But there's still a scar of hurt and unforgiveness. I think it speaks so much to us today and it takes a decision to say, I will do it and fix it. I will do it and fix it. And second, I will change. Amen. It takes a decision. Maybe family, she can hold each other hands. Maybe this is a time or maybe you hold your hearts to the Lord. And I will close in prayer and, and, and say, Father in heaven, we just want to thank you that you need to mature us, oh God, about relationship. Because you sent your begotten son for us to be reconciled to you. That we can have an intimate relationship to you, our Father, oh God. Lord, truly that we will be known who we are, oh God. If they will see that we love one another, respect one another, and honor one another. Father, thank you, dear God. Help us by the power of your spirit, oh God. That truly that we need to change, oh God. Change in our hearts, oh God. That this is not only an information, oh God, but help us, Holy Spirit, that it illumine to us, oh God. That truly that it will bring change in our hearts.